Fruit Ninja. It's a game that's as straightforward as it gets. You slice fruits, avoid bombs, and that's pretty much it. It's simple, yet addictive. And because of this simplicity, I thought that this game would be the perfect candidate for some image recognition automation. But like a lot of projects that I do, it turned out to be a lot more difficult than I had first anticipated. In fact, the first time I attempted this project was almost exactly one year ago, in 2023. To give some context to why I had so many issues with this project the first time around, we need to lay out how a program can automate this game in the first place. The first step of this process is taking a screenshot of the game. This is pretty straightforward, and leads us into the second and most important step, which is extracting information from it. This involves using image recognition to locate all of the relevant objects on screen, which in the case of this game are fruits and bombs. Then the next step after this is processing this information to remove useless or counterproductive data. And lastly, we need some way of determining how to slice the fruits that are located. The part of this pipeline I was getting stuck on was step two, extracting information. My first strategy for this involved trying to locate small parts of the fruit and bomb textures on the screenshot, which is how I locate objects in other games that I've automated before. Except in the case of Fruit Ninja, this is probably the worst way to locate anything. Since the models of the fruits and bombs are 3D and constantly rotating, it's almost impossible to ever locate any part of the texture on the screenshot, so this idea was scrapped. I then desperately tried a wide variety of image transformation methods to see if I could get any better luck. From masking the background, to increasing the saturation and contrast, and even blurring the screenshot. I tried just about everything. I even tried contouring the screenshot to try and locate the edges of objects, which was an epic fail. Now even though not much may have came from this first set of attempts at automating this game, it did give me time to think about how I could better try this project in the future, which is exactly what happened. So let's jump to the present. Since we're now back at the present, I think it's time that I explain a few things about this project. First of all, this project is written in Python. There are a variety of reasons for this, but the main one is that there are a lot of good libraries that I can take advantage of for this project, such as PyAutoGUI, for taking screenshots and for automating mouse movements. Now I'm sure you're wondering, what's my plan for locating objects on the screen this time around? Well, while I was messing around in Paint.net with the dropper tool, I thought of a cool idea. What if a bunch of points on the screenshot are selected, and then the average color of the pixels near that point is calculated? And then based on this color, the program can determine if there's a fruit or a bomb located there. And it would do this by checking how close the sampled color is to a list of predefined object colors. I ended up going with this method in the final program, and it has a bunch of strengths for this specific game. First of all, it's quick. One of the issues with all of the old methods that I tried is that they involved modifying the image data from the screenshot, which can be really slow depending on what operations are done. With this algorithm though, we only need to read color data from the screenshot, which is blazingly fast. The second reason this is good for this game is that it was pretty easy to implement. Here's the color sampling function, for example. It might look a little confusing at first glance, but all we're doing is looping through some points within this region and then adding their color values up, and then calculating the average at the end. And to do this for the whole screen, I basically do the same thing as the sampling function, except that I generate a bunch of positions evenly distributed across the screen instead for sampling color. And then based on any of these points colors, the program can determine if there's a fruit or a bomb located there. And the last reason that this function is good for this game is that it's pretty accurate. Since I can be very specific with how I calibrate this algorithm, the recognition is pretty good, all things considered. Now there are still false positives, but this can be mostly mitigated with some extra code later on. For now though, here's an early test of this algorithm in action. The mouse automatically moves to the first fruit that the program is able to locate on this image, which in this case happens to be the mango. So we've got a good start so far. Logically, the next step from here was to add some slicing. For this, I need to control the mouse, and like I mentioned earlier, I use PyAutoGUI for this. And one weird thing about PyAutoGUI 
is that most of the functions in its API have a small delay that is added on top of the duration argument. So if you plug in zero seconds for the time, it still has a small delay, but thankfully you can disable it with a keyword argument. Regardless though, after attaching the new slicing functionality to the fruit detection, our program can sort of play the game now. But our slicing isn't very intelligent, so it's time for some optimization. Now this whole optimization process took a pretty long time, and I ended up changing a lot of things about the program, but I'll touch on some of the most important changes. Besides actually avoiding the bombs correctly, one of the biggest things I added was a dictionary called Discarded Chords. The purpose of this dictionary is to keep track of points that the mouse should avoid being in proximity of. The main reason I created this was to prevent the program from slicing the same area multiple times over within a short period of time. Another big change that I made is that after the fruits are located, they are now sorted based on a very specific function. This function prefers fruits that are close in color to the predefined ones. This is to reduce the impact of false positives from our image recognition. And the function also prefers fruits that are closer to the middle of the screen. This is to help mitigate the risk of the cursor accidentally striking a bomb as soon as it comes from the bottom of the screen. Now if you've enjoyed learning how this program works, then you should check out this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. If you haven't heard of Brilliant before, it's an engaging learning platform that's built for the 21st century. It features thousands of math, data analysis, programming, and AI-related lessons. Each one of these lessons is designed to give you the most effective learning experience possible by providing you with hands-on problems that build critical thinking skills instead of just memorizing information. And since Brilliant's lessons are split into bite-sized sections, it's easy to build good learning habits by learning whenever and wherever you want to. Now, since my channel's about programming, you'll be happy to learn that Brilliant has an ever-growing selection of programming courses that teach you the fundamentals of computer science, like variables, loops, conditional statements, and more. Develop your mind to think like a programmer by building a strong foundation and writing robust programs. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash codenoodles or click the link down in the description below. You'll also get 20% off of Brilliant's premium annual subscription. A big thank you to Brilliant for being a longtime supporter of the channel, but now let's get back to our program. Since I've shown you most of the important optimizations that I've added, I think it's finally time to show off the final program. The way this is going to work is that I'm going to show you an attempt I recorded, and it will be next to another video displaying where the program thinks that certain objects are. So without any further ado, enjoy the show. This was a very good run, but unfortunately the program misidentified the bomb as a fruit, so 342 is the final score. Obviously this program isn't perfect, but I learned a lot and I had a lot of fun working on it, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. And just as an FYI, I'm now on a website called Coffee, 
It's kind of like Patreon, but more low-key. So if you would like to support the channel, definitely check it out. Either way, thank you guys as always for watching and for your wonderful support, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye